over the years I've mentioned the pineal gland or the third eye and when I have it's had a very mixed response there's a lot of fear about the human anatomy and the elements that we don't understand and this is being done by fundamentalist religious preachers, teachers scaring people away and from their own body and so I want to speak on it and clear that up a little bit as well because over the years as well I've witnessed the error in people people saying oh, I want to activate my third eye I want to open my pineal and yet when you see them that's clearly something they don't understand and actually persons have terrible experiences I've met them and I have great empathy for them because many such persons who say these things the foundation of their life the activity of the flesh or if you take my recent linguistic framework where I was exploring the notion that an alien species genetically interfered with our human body negatively perhaps positively at some point as well and put stuff inside our mind our brain to make us a slave so the activity of the alien slave technology perhaps the flesh whichever linguistic term you want to use is vibrationally as such that persons go into a practice where they are entering stillness and elevating their vibration and elevating your vibration doesn't guarantee that you're going to the angelic realm I've said in a recent video in this country the children we protect from the witch doctor religions etc those witch doctors fast but they do it to bring harm and so they elevate their vibration and they meet with higher dimensional negative entities higher spiritual powers that are demonic you can call it and so persons go into a practice and they go into meditation and stillness and they have these horrible experiences because the activity of their waking life is not in order and so most persons then retreat back to something and they go to the teachings of Yeshua and they find the comfort they find the the love and the peace of God there because now they recognize there's some law here there's some spiritual law you know the fundamentalists have also wrecked the word sin it's spiritual law that we have in this dimension of reality and so the foundation of the spiritual life comes back in order because the foundation of the spiritual life is the human body in in our manifestation here and so when the human body is misbehaving and you try to elevate if your thoughts your words and your deeds are not coherent then you're going to come off track and so this is where people come into a space where they are unfortunately influenced by the negative and they return back to a stable life with the right morality the right behaviors and it dissipates and rightly so but what about the most fundamentalist Christian teacher or preacher I myself a Christian would say I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit I pray in tongues I speak in tongues when you do that you become very still and you receive visions from God even the most fundamentalist preacher you can say where does the vision arrive it arrives in the in the brain somehow we can feel it we know it we know where it is and in the middle of the brain is the thalamus and in the middle of the thalamus is the pineal and the pineal has a retina and so it's simply quite arguable that this is where the visions from God come from and so is this important for persons because the reality is that people are misunderstanding what's going on I want to activate the pineal this is not what anyone wants to do this this is where you receive your vision and your guidance from God if you look at it in this framework 
that this is the point whereby which the soul enters the human body. The Tibetan Book of the Dead says that the soul enters the body at exactly the point where we know in science the pineal gland forms when we are in the mother's womb. So if we say this is the doorway for the soul, go with this theory with me for a moment. Then when your awareness comes through the pineal and into the body, the soul, the awareness that we are, the loving awareness that we are, comes through the pineal into the body, it animates the body as a child, it's beautiful, there's light there. But then the flesh interferes or the alien slave technology interjects. And the element that interjects is the formation of a self-image. Now Yeshua taught this as well, only the humble, only the humble can be guided by God. God teaches the humble his ways, it says in Psalms. Humility is dependent on one thing, and that is a lack of a self-image. If there's a self-image present, humility can't be there. Pride, which is opposed to God, it's the very reason that Lucifer fell and the angels fell was pride, is absolutely reliant on a foundation of a self-image. Humility is reliant on a lack of a self-image. Pride is reliant on there being a self-image. And so the element of the technology within us that is creating the, the issues for the soul is the element we call the self-image. This is where the flesh takes us and grabs us and other cultures have called it the ego, etc. This is why we have to be reborn. We have to give up the self-image and come back. And when the awareness is no longer ricocheting and rattling around in the, in the technology of the self-image, in the flesh, in the mind, it returns the awareness back and back. And you begin, you can see your thoughts, you see the structure of this illusory character you've built inside yourself. And eventually that awareness falls all the way back. And it falls back to the point, I would say, whereby which the soul enters the body. And that being, that doorway being the pineal. And so even if you don't say it is or it isn't, but in this theory, follow me. If the pineal is the seat of the soul, the doorway whereby which we enter and exit the body, as the awareness falls back there, as Meister Eckhart said, a 12th century Christian mystic, the eye by which I see God and the eye by which God sees me is the same eye. If your awareness falls back away from the self-image and it begins to see the self-image separate from the awareness, no longer are you caught inside it or the impulses of the body and its addictions, etc. You fall back into the point where the soul comes to the body and your awareness acknowledges its connection behind the veil to the infinite. It acknowledges that it's a child of God. As it says, in the teachings of Yeshua, those who are governed by the Spirit, those are the children of God. And so, anatomically speaking, if persons are saying, I, I want to activate my pineal, no you don't. What you want to do is work out your humility. Because if you go around saying, I want to just activate my third eye, it's like my hand. I can say my hand can really hurt somebody with a weapon or a like, or I can write a beautiful poem or a beautiful post, or I can write on behalf of some children to get some help. The hand is not the problem. But if you all of a sudden say, I just want to activate my hand, and the, the intention of the vibration of your body is, is not in alignment, and you don't know what the hand's going to do or where it's going to go to, that would be foolish. You would rather say, let me set the right foundation inside me so the hand writes a beautiful poem, so it does something beautiful. Let not, let, let's not just leave the, the intention to its own doing and, and do as we do with intention. Because if you look, a man who gets on his knees or in meditation and gives thanks and, 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 and elevates into this loving space and opens their heart, to give thanks for all that's around them, to give love and healing where it's possible. This person dedicates two hours of prayer to the source of all, to the white light of creation, to Christ. 
it gives a prayer of great love. If a person is addicted to pornography and the flesh and separation and they spend two hours doing that, this is still a prayer, vibrationally speaking. And so if you are connecting vibrationally speaking in your working life to these spheres of energy, and then you go, I, I just want to activate my pineal. This is where trouble starts because persons haven't done the foundational work. They haven't reprogrammed the alien slave technology. I've said recently, again, words like repentance, people shun them, I don't want to hear repentance. Okay, then listen, when you do something you should not, it doesn't make you feel good, you've made a program in your brain. Repentance is a counter program to stop it from taking a hold and destroying your life. This is repentance, it's a counter program. You're reprogramming in a better way by force, not by addiction, not by the allure of the flesh, but by the very will of your soul. You make a counter program inside the flesh. And so the pineal, if we go with this, is this sacred area. And in the Bible, Yeshua said, let thy eye be single and your whole body will fill with light. And so, let thy eye be single, your whole body will fill with light. If you become humble, as Yeshua said, and your awareness falls back, and the ancients are right, that the pineal is the point where the soul enters the body, your awareness has no place to go, but all the way back to the point whereby which the true origin of what you are, the soul, entered the body. The infinite consciousness and awareness entered the body. And so you will fall back to that sacred place. And indeed, light is what comes because you feel whole, content, connected and one with God and you feel unconditioned love there. Jacob also said, I've seen God face to face and I call that place Peniel. It's spelled differently, but you have to acknowledge and say this makes sense because as well, the largest Christian institution in the world seems to know about this. Beyond the obvious mark of the Hindu faith and the Buddhist faith, there is a symbology of a pine cone to be acknowledged. Now, remembering that it doesn't change that the teachings of living righteously are what we should be focused upon to be reborn. We shouldn't be focused upon this. This is the gift whereby which God brings you vision and guidance in this theoretical stance of the anatomy of prayer that the voice of God is heard through there. You don't need to know that. I don't need to know how my carburetor works to drive my car well. You don't need it. But seems so many are caught up in this misunderstanding of what this is and, and what it's about. I thought I best make this. And so, we have this mark, but the other symbology is the pine cone. And again, the Buddha's head, etc., is denoted as a pine cone, Krishna too. But all different cultures have had this pine cone. But there is this, the staff of Dionysus has a pine cone on the end. The staff of Osiris has a pine cone as well. And that pine cone is said to be dripping with honey. Now, the other person who carries a staff with a pine cone is the Pope. And I myself, I can't believe the Vatican don't know the symbology. I can't believe that a Pope so educated cannot know that and so I feel they've just restricted it. Perhaps because persons won't understand or perhaps for other reasons because the anatomy of prayer was not discussed by Yeshua. I, but I can't believe they don't know because the largest statue of a pine cone in the world is also in Vatican City. And so this is symbology, a deep sacred symbology that's existed throughout mankind's story. But what I find very interesting as well is that when we speak of the idea that this self-image element of the human body may be hacked in by an alien slave technology, when we, when we look to this and we speak to this idea, the very creation story that says that happened on the planet, it says the oldest engraved creation story says an alien species came and hacked humanity's body to make them into a slave. Inside those depictions, those depicted as gods, are holding pine cones like this. 
And so I've said that, what is the demonic realm? What's it there for? To extract energy from humans, it would seem. Perhaps so, if you want to stay with biblical terms, Lucifer can re-challenge the heavens. Or, in my encounter when I met this species in meditation, they said that they believed through technology they would escape this god, and they believed I was deceived with nice feelings of love and thanksgiving by the god that, that, that I know. And so, as they have separated from the presence of that love and wholeness, as with a human when they do, humans begin frantically seeking pleasure because they need to feel some joy. But it's not real joy, it's short-term pleasure. And so you watch humans doing that, they have the same problem. And in making humanity suffer, the friction of that separation from God's presence seems to be an energy source for them. And so they knew it would seem that the pineal must be there to drag the soul, the awareness, into the body. They knew it. And in bringing that soul in, that pure gift from the divine that animates the life that we are, that we are all looking through these bodies, a part of this beautiful, sacred, expansive consciousness and the, the souls we are. That in pulling them into the body they could create the separation to continue their sojourn of trying to become God through technological advancement. This is how the theory goes. So how does this reflect on us today? Well I've said, and I can't show it scientifically, that in my body I know when the moon is in my star sign, I feel my secretion. And this is a sacred oil inside the body. And if it's preserved, you will feel the connection to God. And you will feel your self-image fade. And you will feel stronger and more vital. Even in my hours of sickness, which right now I'm not, I'm not doing so great in Africa at the moment with my health. It's a lot for me. But when the moon enters into Aries, I feel the elevation of my energy. I feel the elevation of my mental clarity. And so it's said that this ictos, this chrism, travels through the body. A gift of the anatomy of prayer from God, a design of the human body. And as it does, it goes through the 33 vertebrae. And it passes through the 12th cranial nerve, or the hypoglossal, through the olive. And this is where I feel we get this idea of putting olive oil on our foreheads. The 12th cranial nerve, this, this chrism, sacred secretion, ictos, passes through the olive, the olive oil. And when it does, it sits for two and a half days, just as Jesus did in a tomb, and then it resurrects and it activates the pineal and the pituitary, and you get a secretion of DMT and honey. And this is not only once a month, I can say, but this is a part of how you receive vision. When you live with temperance, this biochemistry is available to you as a spiritual being, as an anatomy of prayer. And when you do that, and it, it chemically balances those fine-tuned inner workings of the thalamus, you get vision from God. The land flowing with milk and honey is the promised land. DMT's honey-like substance uh, serotonin, a milky substance. The staff of Dionysus is is a pine cone dripping with honey. And I've said this before, it's symbolic in the Bible. Samson wrestles a lion. The lion is the self-image element of the technology. When he finishes wrestling the lion, what does he find inside it? The honey. Because when the self-image is gone, when the humility arises, you are going to return to that promised land. And so what's very important here, if you're spinning off on this research, aliens, pineal gland, third eye, etc. You don't want to activate your third eye. You want to be right with God. This is what you want. You need your life to be right with God. You can't trick this. You can't trick a spiritual system from God. And this is why people are having dreadful experiences because they are moving into higher dimensions and the foundation of the activity of their carnal life of the body 
the deeds. They are vibrationally not aligned to the angelic. And so they raise up and what do they meet? Because a human who has self-image and walks in that prideful state. Now pride has a spectrum. Even if you are introverted and very worried what everyone's going to think about you, this is pride. This is pride. You're worried about your self-image. It has a spectrum. It doesn't have to be chest beating, etc. If you have a self-image, these higher dimensional negative beings, these demonic forces, they have dominion over you. You are a lower vibration, vibrational spectrum because of the technology keeping you in a lower vibration. When you are moving in humility, free of a self-image which humility is dependent upon, you are a higher vibrational being than they are. This is where you can have dominion. You can take them off people. This is where Yeshua said, you will cast out demons. You will heal. Because when you are free of the image, you are a vessel that can embody the spirit coming through and the presence of God coming through. When you are full of self-image, there's no room for that. There's no space for it. And so what you want to do is get right with God. You might want to, I want to activate my pain. I want to go on some sort of astral journey in time, if needed, for what God has called you for your life. These things will happen. No doubt, these things will happen. They've happened to myself. I've had no intention of achieving them. My only intention was to serve God, to bring love to this world and to help the children and this family of 200 wonderful children and nearly 150 dogs that he, has, that he has blessed me to be the head of, the visionary of, I should say. That was my only intention. Everything else came with it because I realized as I was walking that whenever my self-image came in, I messed it up. And so my job was to get still be still and know that I am God. The I am is the soul presence coming through and I'm saying it comes through the pineal. And so it is a sacred place of God's temple, no doubt. But the only way to get there is to clean up the behavior of your body. Follow the teachings of what Yeshua said. These are spiritual laws. You should follow them. Truth has a potent, powerful vibration. Lying and, and malice has a different vibration. If you want to be guided by the angelic, move in the truth with yourself and others. If you want to be scared when you go into meditation and end up with a vision and see something terrifying and you have fear of it and you can't do anything about it, continue with not dealing with the activity of the body and you will continue to hit these vibrational frequencies that invite these negative experiences and negative entities. So get right with God. And if you say, I want to, now what do I do? The voice who says that is the self-image, trying to do what the self-image cannot. There's nothing that voice can do to get there. You have to give that voice to the, to the feet of God so you can be reborn with a foundation of humility, which is dependent on the foundation free of a self-image and it, it won't be permanent of course your self-image will come because the technology is in you but in time the greatest joy in your life will be the stillness because you'll feel so whole and full and complete and full of love when you're there that you'll crave it as you move around your day and you find reasons to build a self-image a voice so loud that's speaking to you from the seat of your soul, arguably from the pineal, will be saying to you, remember, remember who you are. Don't fall into your awareness, into this technology ricocheting around as a self-image again. Remember the suffering that that brings. Remember the disconnection from, from source, from God, from God's love, from God's presence that brings. And you will walk in such a way whereby when you enter a situation your focus will be to be still because you'll know the wisdom that comes through the pineal will know what to do and the self-image often will not 
and so there must be time time to sit in the stillness time to be to be there to allow your awareness to fall back to observe thought to observe the illusion of self from thought to observe the self image from thought to then fall all the way back to begin observing that you are somehow actually the observer and the observed it is no more and you realize that you've fallen back to the point where by which perhaps we can say you entered your body through that sacred space and your soul your soul hears God's voice without any interference and your actions will change you will start to be more charitable, more compassionate just as Yeshua told you you would be when you're humble but if, like I made the mistake, you form an image that you're humble you're in big trouble <laughs> you're in big trouble because humility is dependent on no self-image so. okay. that was all if you want to use your pineal to get visions from God, get right with God in the activity of your body and your working life. And then yes, you can pray, meditate, get still, and visions will come, and they'll be right, you'll know it. But that's just part of the whole walk. That's just part of, of bringing the will of the heavens to earth the will of unconditioned love into the human story. God bless guys. Be well.